money, baby. They don't need so, cash in their hands. Right. So now we're taking the fuck with them. Regardless of the bank. You, 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 you don't know. You don't know the fucking intentions. You teaching that. What are people? Listen. I'm going to take my thing down here. Right. I'm going to run it. Man, when I try to conduct. Come on. And I'm talking about my in-law niece. My niece. I didn't bought her. I was born in the same place I was. But they decided to move along. They traveled here. I had a homeboy. And another I'm thinking about you and the motherfucker. Now I'm trying to hold out. I want to get it done. They both was the same, but. What's the money been through? And you just scripted this shit. Oh, they got some diamonds in them. I need them to expect you to pay the bills. Take care of right. video stuff. So I got all this video stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the smartest dumb people, and I'm the host, Anthony That Dude Johnson. And to my right, we got my man Jason Gentry in the building. He is a firefighter. He is a fucking real live hood superhero. Jason, welcome to the show. And to my left, always, always, always to my left, Quando Rondo in the building. Yo, LB decided to sit out. He had some family things he had to take care of. The show must go on. So listen, we got a great, great show. Jason from the Firefighter Association. How do you say it? The uh, Omaha Association of Black Professional Firefighters. Okay. He's a black firefighter, basically, is what he's saying. And he's also a superhero. Have you ever saved a life? Before we get started, have you ever saved a life? Uh, I don't save lives. I just I help situations. You don't save lives? What kind of shit is that? You know, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm i a spiritual person, so I believe, you know, life oh. and death, that's up to God. So okay, right, right, I, right. I take the tools that they teach us and train us, right. and I go do my best to help a situation. That's a pretty good way of thinking about it, but it's superhero to me. What do you think about your superhero? Anybody that's black and a firefighter is considered a <laughs> you superhero. You definitely saved a life. For yeah, sure. man. So listen. Before we get started, we're going to show the clip. Make sure y'all like and share. Before we get started, we're going to show the clip of Jason on the news talking about the Black Firefighters Association and what they got to bring to the table and how they're trying to bring minorities into the firefighter world. Uh, this is the actual clip, and we'll be right back with you. Entering program that has gained momentum over the years. The Omaha Black Firefighters Association is working to get more minority firefighters on the team. Our 3 News Now reporter Danielle Davis has more on their efforts. This is a classroom full of firefighter hopefuls. Historically, when it comes to minorities in fire service, the numbers are low. The Omaha Black Firefighters Association is working to change that. Uh, I think it's important because a lot of times uh, people from our community don't realize that this is an opportunity for them. So to me, the biggest part about a black, being a black firefighter or being part of the organization is visibility so that kids can see us and realize that, hey, you know, this is an option for me. With the help of their HR department and support from Chief Olson, they say the numbers are increasing. We want to give people uh, information on the jobs we love. We love being firefighters. We want to share that knowledge and we want, you know, more people of our community to get involved. The process to become a firefighter is intense. It could take anywhere from eight months up to two years. You know, I had zero experience going into the fire community. And so having that mentor, going back to your question, was huge because having somebody um, that's been through the process, just having somebody that's giving you motivation to help you complete your ultimate goal. And um, my ultimate goal from the jump was to become a firefighter. And having that mentor um, helped me a lot, you know. Along with classroom knowledge, they have to pass agility testing, as well as be able to communicate effectively with the community. Uh, the Black Firefighters Association is, exists to help my, more minorities get on the job. Um, but once you're on the job, it, it's really not about being a minority, it's about being a, a public servant, it's about being uh, a help to your community and a, a service to the people that need us. The best part of the job, they say, is just being able to do their job. Um, I mean, it's just like waking up every single day is going to my job. I, I love going to my job. Um, it's the best job I ever had. I love it. Um, I just want to share that gift with somebody else. All right, so that's the actual clip of them breaking down why they have the Firefighters Association. I seen the, I was actually watching the news and said, that's my guy. I know him personally. I, I was talking like he was a celebrity. I can have him on here today if I wanted to. Watch this. Text them right away in response. What's up, bro? 
Right. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate you coming through, man, because uh, the whole point of the Smartest Down People is anybody that's doing positive things in the community, man, we come from the struggle, bro. We, we've been through a lot as black men, as young black men. And then to see somebody like yourself become a firefighter, even though, again, you were uh, a rapper, Christian rapper, one of the dopest rappers I know, uh, but you always had a good spirit. So for you to right. come as long as far as you came to become a fighter, fighter, fire fighter. I'm tongue twisted today because I've been busting my ass working and then now I'm working again. But to become a firefighter and, and be like expressing it to all the black men out there that, that they can do it too, I think it's powerful in itself because I'm telling you, man, we are so limited when it comes to the way we think. And to see somebody of your caliber that I grew up with playing basketball next to and all of that shit, to see you on the news expressing how you can become a fighter fighter, it's different than a motherfucker that's got an infomercial. You know what I'm saying? It's somebody that got a message that I know personally that got something to say. And man, I want to ask you this. How do you get started with even trying to become a fighter fighter? Um, first of all, you just got to decide to do it. Uh, decide to do it. Uh, Will Smith said there's a power in a decision. So you just got to make the decision to do it. Uh, once you do that, you find out when the applications are open, um, and then you do the application process. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, you can go get your EMT. That's helpful. You can get your Firefighter 1, your Firefighter 2. You can get an EMS degree. There's so many things you can do. Right. What I tell everybody is apply. Apply first. Right, apply first. Right. Um, if you want to get your EMT, which is a great idea, I recommend everybody do it if you're able to. But start it, but don't let anything stop you from applying. Because a lot of people feel... Uh, well, I'm going to get this first, right. I'm going to get this first, this. I'm going to yeah. get that first, and right. then I'll apply, and it'll make me better. Right. They don't realize, man, being on a paid fire department in any city, being on a paid fire department is just as hard as getting drafted to the NFL or the NBA. So you have to take every opportunity you have. So if, right. if you join the EMT, apply. If you don't get hired, you finish your EMT, apply again. Right. Do your fire one, apply. Right. If you don't get hired, finish fire one, Apply. Right. I mean, you want to keep applying, and, and hopefully you get lucky. Yeah. And every time you go in that interview with that chief, you can say, "Hey, uh, last time I didn't have anything. This time I have my EMT. This right. time I have my fire one." And then that shows that you, you you're yeah, dedicated yeah. to doing right, it. Right. Right. Is it harder to get a uh, uh, get in the fire department than it is the police? Um, I don't know. Um, Y'all beefing, ain't y'all? No, we ain't, we ain't never beefing. <laughs> no, no, we're not beefing. Uh, but. I, my desire was to be a firefighter, so that's what I put my effort into. Um, I think they're probably equally hard, um, but with the fire department, um, I'm going to always tell people we, we it's a better job than the police department, oh, just because yeah. I, I, I love what I, I do. I took that damn test, man. Well, I didn't take the test. You a firefighter? I didn't take the initial test, but I did start the initial classes at Metro, and I said, these motherfucking questions are hard. <laughs> <laughs> they are hard. <laughs> It's a, a, that EMT firefighter course, you got to put your dedication in. You yeah. got to put your work in. It ain't just like, oh, fuck it, I got classes today. I'm ready. I ain't study. No, you have to put your work in and time and due diligence to. Of course, you're saving fucking lives. It's like trying to apply to be a doctor. No, I'm just saying. No. I, I, hey, I, I, I started the class. I didn't finish the class. Why so. not? Because it was too hard. Because it's not going to succeed. I, I didn't put enough dedication into the course. But, but you know what? What I tell everybody is, if you are dedicated, right, you can achieve anything. Definitely. Because I work with people that have master's degrees, bachelor's degrees. I got a GED. I'm from Miller Park. Yeah. I played basketball with y'all. Used to hoop y'all up all the time because oh, y'all couldn't hold me. Yeah, no. Okay, that right. sounds good. We used to go back and forth. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm from the same neighborhood that a lot of the kids that we're talking to are from. And like right. I said, I got kicked out of high school. Got a GED. Decided I want something better for my life. Uh, went from one good job or decent job to another one. Then when I got this opportunity, yeah. you know, I, I, I was dedicated. Yeah, ran to it. with it, yeah. So what's the end goal when it comes to the Black Firefighters Association? What's the end goal to get as many Black firefighters in there as possible, or to get as many minorities? Minorities. When women. I say minorities, what I mean is uh, Blacks, Hispanics, and women of any color, because those are all minorities on the fire service. Just to get them interested in the fire service. Right. Because again, like you said. Uh, we didn't see that when we were young. You know, I didn't see black firefighters right, when right, I was young. So right. I didn't think that was a viable option for me. I didn't realize that this was an opportunity for me until John Farmer, who's the president of the association, my brother, was like, man, why ain't you doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, why? And, and he kept talking to me, kept talking to me. And, and I was like, uh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. And I applied. 
and then uh, I moved to Texas. So I didn't finish the application process. I moved to Texas because I was trying to pursue my music. And uh, from Texas, I moved to California. After California, I came back home, and then John was still on me. He said, no, we're yeah. doing it for real this time. And right. I went for it. I, I scored pretty good on the written test, uh, and then things just started falling in place for me. Right, right. Like a, hey, that will sound like a master. We have a whole, hey, full conversation between our our uh, our little club that we got going on. They talking some weird shit, but uh, in my personal opinion, um, and this is what I was talking to LV about. I said, I'm gonna be honest with you. I never thought about being a firefighter because black people don't want to risk their lives. We are the, I'm saying as I got you, but I mean this, it. I we are the scariest people when it comes to endangering ourselves. Not scary as in living, but we don't like to endanger ourselves. We don't go fucking jumping off of planes. We don't uh, do those type of things. Firefighting is in that same extreme realm of risking your life. Black people don't like to risk their life. They don't like to drive fast, well, besides the ride. I can tell you <laughs> 10 things that me and my family or me and my my little circle don't do. We don't drive fast. We don't like planes. We don't go uh, hiking in uh, woods to where it can have bears and lions. We don't do shit like that. So that's what I'm saying. That's what firefighter is to me. A firefighter to me is, is extreme circumstances. But you're trained. You're trained. Exactly. And, and, and the one thing Omaha is very good about, they're very good about training. And so by the time you, you get out there and you're on a call, it's not like I'm afraid of this. It's like, hey, I'm right. ready to do this. And then at the end of the day, a lot of things you're talking about are things people do for sport and leisure. Right. Yeah, I don't want to risk my life for sport and leisure. Right. But if I'm risking my life to save a life, you know, to help somebody, that's a different story. Just like you, I know you personally. So I know good and well, if there was a car accident, you saw a car accident, somebody's hurt badly, and there was something you could do to help. You wouldn't hesitate to go up. You know what's crazy is I'm so glad you said that. LB, I was just sitting up, I was on the phone and we was talking, and as I said that to him, his exact words was, he said, shit, let a motherfucking fire break out next to you. You go spring into action. <laughs> he said, you go spring into action. He said, I am too. He said, that's just human nature. And I, like I said, it's still not trying to get paid for it, though. It's just me being a good Samaritan. I'm not trying to get paid to, to risk my life. Uh, but I could see myself like uh, 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 shout out to the kids, mom, uh, the two kids that lost their lives uh, for New Year's Day. I wanted to talk about that, but I couldn't find the article before you came. Uh, but in those situations, man, I couldn't I couldn't sleep at night knowing somebody's in the home burning and, and, and it's not gonna make it. I don't know, man. Well, I, I, I I'll say this one. I will say the job's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So you do got to make sure that this is something for you. Um, and God, I can't speak on that situation. I wasn't on that call. If I was on that call, I really couldn't speak on it. So I, I won't speak on that. But I will say in general, uh, the hardest calls for any of us are children. Mm -hmm. Like anytime you have a, because we, because most of us are, are parents. So whenever you have uh, situations where children are involved, and especially children that might be the age of your children, right, it, right. It, it, hit, it hits home there. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. and it, do, it does affect you. You know, uh, unfortunately, uh, Fire department, police department. There's a lot of PTSD on, on, on in, in this field, and, oh, yeah. and there's a lot of things that you have to uh, be willing to accept. Um, and that's why I focus on, like when you said superhero, I said I don't I don't save lives because I also don't take the burden of taking a life. Like when I do, when I go, I do the best that I can do. I do the best that I'm trained. You know, I care about the situation, but at the end of the day, I know that's in God's hands, right. and and I can't take the the blame. That they that somebody doesn't make it, right. and I well, can't take correct. the credit that they did. All right, so I'm glad you said that, and I want to ask you this question: uh, In the fire department, do they allow you to have those type of beliefs? Because to me, because to me, it sounds like if, uh, uh, you would think in something to where you're saving lives, uh, they probably wouldn't want the Bible involved. Well, kind of like sports, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't uh, I don't go on a call and be like, uh, have you met my Lord and Savior? Yeah. You know, so I yeah. don't do that on the call. Right. It's a personal belief I have. Like right. when, when I like when we get a call and I hear that it's a bad because they, they uh, the, when the tones or the alarm hits, uh -huh. they give you a little information about where you're going and what the call is. 
if I hear something bad, I'll be in my seat and I'll just say a prayer to myself, you know, like, Lord, yeah. you know, uh, get there before we get there, you know, help me to help, yeah. you know, let the situation go smooth. Like, I, I'll say a prayer as I'm thinking about, because, again, once you know what the call is, you go through scenarios in your head, okay, if it's a car accident, I know when I get there, uh, let me make sure the parking brake is on. Let me make sure yeah. uh, the tires are flat. You break it down before yeah, you're already thinking yeah. about it so when, so that when you get there, you can, because seconds count. So you want to be able to get there and go straight to, to, to your job. So, all right, so maybe I should uh, revert the question in a different way. So say, for example, you're on a call and a, a child passes or a human being passes. And your response, you know how they got, they got to have interviews to see what you did in the situation. And your response is, it was in God's hands. Well, I wouldn't, uh, if, if I was ever in an interview, I wouldn't say it was in God's hands. I would say... Um, what actually what I saw, what I act, what actually happened, and everything like that. When I go back to the stations, and because these, these guys, we live together for 24 hours. This is my family. Right. These guys are my brothers. You know, I, I had a loss in my family recently, and uh, my brothers, black, white, it didn't matter what color they were, called me daily. Are you okay? You need anything? I'll shoot over there if you need something. Like it didn't matter uh, race or or, right, gender right. or anything. These are my family. So when we get back to the station, that's when I, I'll. I don't go, I don't preach to nobody, you know, but I, I'll, I'll go be like, hey, are you okay? You know, do you need to talk? Are you all right? You know, and, and, and you know, if they want to talk about faith, then we will. If they don't, we don't. You know, I, it's, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't push that on anybody. Right. And, and you know, uh, I'm glad you said that also because men uh, have a hard time asking each other, are you okay? And, and especially somebody like yourself working in that field that you can easily get PTSD from one phone call. Uh, I, I think that you're spreading a good message by just being able to on our platform for them to say that you and your guys say, are you okay? And, and I try to stress that to my people all, all the time. Like, it's okay. It's okay to be like, is you all right? And I'm like really concerned. Like, because I do it for Ron. Like, like me and this man been friends since I was 14 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to talk to him every day. As long as when I talk to him, it's genuine and I'm concerned about how he's doing. Like, he's happy. That's all that matters to me, you know what I'm saying? But we lack that. We don't really, we don't really know how to express to ourselves or to our friends what it is to have feelings. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And, and I think it's worse in our community, but as a whole, men in general, we're taught, you know, be tough, don't show weakness. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I tell all my partners, hey, I love you. You know, and I, I got a, a friend, one of my best friends, lives in California. He'll laugh and be like, yeah, okay, bye, boy. I said, no, I love you. Like, we'll make yeah, a joke about right, it. Right. I'm like, hey, you going to tell me you love me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because cause at the end of the day, tomorrow's not promised to us. And right. I, don't want, I don't want any day to go by where the people I care about don't know that I care about them. Right. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I got a couple homies that stress that same shit. You're yeah. like, nigga, I love you. Well, all right. I love you too. Y'all ain't, there ain't no question. Yeah. But some people just want to hear back and want to express uh, Words of affirmation. Yeah, yeah it's just confirmation. Yeah, yeah. But, um, all right, so I feel like we touched on the fire fire uh, enough. We want you to be human. This is what we do for the show. When you come on the show, you got to turn into one of the cast members. We have conversation and dialogue. Hey, can I say something real quick, yeah, yeah. not to interrupt you? Uh, to anybody that is interested mm -hmm. in joining the fire department, oh, yeah, shoot it out. Um, they already took applications, so they won't be taking applications for two years. They only do it every two years. That's why it's important to apply. But... Get me on Facebook. Shoot me an inbox. Even if you miss the opportunity now, shoot me an inbox and say I'm interested. And when that time comes, I'll contact you and say, hey, right. you're still interested. Let's get on it. You know, I'll go to the gym. I'll work out with you. We'll study. We'll do study groups. Whatever it oh, takes yeah, to get you deep. here. We'll that's get you serious here. business. That's serious business. Hey, man. And, and like I said, I appreciate you, brother. Now it's time to become one of the cast members that have a dialogue with us that has something to do with everything that's going on in society. Um... I think we'll hit the Antonio Brown situation first, and then we'll jump jump to the public servant speaking on the COVID situation. So basically, Antonio Brown walks off the field in the middle of the game. They still haven't really came out with the reports of what actually happened, uh, but I felt like we should die we should digest it as a team. Um, here's the actual clip of a football player by the name of Antonio Brown, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL to me ever, uh, walks off the field. Just the actual clip.
right, so that's the actual clip of Antonio Brown walking off the football field. I would like to say, again, I'd like to talk about what we talk about on the show. I always talk about mental illness. People are blaming it on mental illness. I'm blaming it on a spoiled kid. He was spoiled when he got into the NFL by the path he took and was great. And, and it looks like he's just gifted. People that are gifted like that, um, they tend to be, they ask his kids their whole life. And I'm not saying they don't have no yeah. CTE or no mental illness. That's not what I'm saying. But I think it starts with his spoiled behavior. Nobody should have wanted to sign him for at least no. a year. He signed to two different teams in one year after getting kicked off a team. Yeah, the thing is, though, too, let me, let me, let me get ahead. interrupt. Bust it up. Uh, being a Steelers fan. Yeah, go ahead. I, that's where he started from. So I, I, he grinded to get to where to, to get his name and get his, his well deserved. But well deserved. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm just saying he didn't start off from the top like he was like always no, talented, bro. Like he was like, always talented, but he you no know, he started off on a on a on a practice squad. He grinded to get his name and his notoriety, and he and he put his work in, like we just talking about. The man put his work in. But I think this um, the spazzing out after he got his name. I mean, that is to me, and, and that goes down as probably the, the dumbest shit I've ever seen in sports history. Yeah, yeah. To I, I, quit it, it, making millions of dollars. No, no, he didn't quit. I, what I he what quit. I no what I heard is that it, he wasn't gonna get his bonus from three hundred thousand. He needed eight catches. I understand that. No, man. or a touchdown. Or a touchdown? Yeah. Right, I think bro. it was three different bonuses. Yeah. It was like to to the total of all three was a million dollars. Yeah. So one yeah. was for catches, one was for touchdowns, and I don't know what the other one yeah. was. So. Yeah, it was, yeah. All right, so you tell him. But he still right. had a whole other game. A whole yeah. other game. So I was yeah. saying that. I'm just like, I don't yeah. know. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why he did that. did that. Like, they cut him right then. I don't understand I think that. that he had, I, I think he had some signs of CTE. Yeah. And I think he, he probably was a roguish ass kid. But uh, I think that, man, when you're making that, this is what hurts, this is what breaks my heart, man, is that when you see somebody making that type of money, right, and, and there's so many people out there starving, you're doing something you love, man. Sometimes, I tell my kids all the time, sometimes you just have to really wake up and just be happy to yeah. be in the situation right, right. you're in. You gotta act like you came but from the bottom I'm still. A, I'm going to say this. I got a different perspective because my wife is a therapist, mm. and we talk about mental health all the time, and... When you say, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that, I tell my kids this, you're talking from a logical mind. Right. You know, you're talking to somebody that can understand what you're saying. Yeah. When people have mental health issues, right. they got a whole different mind. Like, a lot of times, they they don't register it the way that your daughter would register it or you would register mm -hmm. it. So, it's, it's like, um, uh, there's a job, a buddy of mine took a, uh, a went, tried to get a job, and they did a psychological eval. And the therapist asked him if he thought he was the devil. So he said no. So at the end of the thing, the therapist said, do you have any questions for me? And he said, well, if I thought I was the devil and I was trying to get this job, wouldn't I say no? And he said, no, mental health doesn't work that way. If somebody has mental health issues, in their mind, that's normal. So they're like, yeah, don't you think you're the devil? I'm the, yeah, I'm the devil. Because it's normal to them. If he has mental health issues, if that's the issue, was it, yeah. then at the end of the day, this is normal to him. Like His thought process is, is like, yeah, why wouldn't I take my shirt off and run down the sideline? They say if he has mental health issues. They said Mike Tomlin is the real MVP. He put up with him for nine years. He said, uh, I can agree. I can agree with that. Hey, but Tomlin, Tomlin had him in his prime too. You can't listen. But that we can talk about uh, money all day. Uh, no, that man was. Money. I think he could have been a black man giving another black man another chance too every year. Every year. But you, you don't know how many locker room problems. I, was in that motherfucking locker room. I think it was a combination of both. I think there's some mental health issues, but I also think. Uh, CT that we well, yeah, well, I don't know if it's CT or if it's just regular mental I don't know but there's some mental health issues going on in my opinion but I also think like you said like he probably surrounds himself with yes men and people that are there for the money and yeah, yeah. nobody tells him no so he's a little spoiled he's a little addicted to the fame and, I mean you know he was spoiled when he was humping the massage therapist and then like uh, uh, that came out and that just got swept and, and I can't believe and I shouldn't even brought it up because I hate when they bring up a black man's past, but not like Ben Roethlisberger. Because like I scream at the TV every time I see 
Ben Roethlisberger. He's a fucking rapist. They they try to make Ben Roethlisberger this that hero. Never, that was never proven. That right. man don't, don't steal was raping women in the bathroom, bro. True story. So I'm just saying, like I always hate when they bring up like how they say Kobe Bryant or or we don't when it comes to white men when they beat the case or the case never like uh, Watson. He's gonna live with that whatever he did with the masseuse and the whatever for the rest of his life. If even if he get back in the league. But when it comes to white players, that's not the case. So I'm, I'm just apologizing because I sh- shouldn't have brought up what been swept under the rug with Brown. So uh, I don't want to stick on this topic too long because we got multiple topics. Let's go to the next topic, which is a public servant lady, basically a, a bus driver, uh, came out and was speaking on why people don't want to work for these bus companies or these, these public companies because... Uh, they want you to be around COVID and they ain't caring about your safety. Um, this is the actual clip. We'll be right back with y'all. There are no drivers for the B train, the D train, the W train, and I believe they said the M train. No drivers. Why? A Maracan. We have 50 drivers out and this morning four more were taken out. Now, let me tell y'all this, right? I was told that a guy got on my job yesterday in my bus and said Manhattanville has 102 people out. Uh, Fresh Pond has over 40 people out. Listen, let me tell y'all what's going on. This is what's really happening. You know what I'm talking about. Let me just say this to y'all, right? Uh, Sorry. Listen, we were told, now listen to this. If you test positive, but have no symptoms, hi, Ty Legacil, hi, Barbara Postel, you still have to come to work. Let me say that one more time. I want you to hear this. Hi, Eugene Dixon, my brother. If you test positive for COVID, hi, Dr. Noreen Davis, you still have to come to work even if especially if you don't have any symptoms i'm sorry hi dr ronnie j johnson if you have no symptoms there was a guy at my job yesterday he had he was tested positive but he had no symptoms he was told he had to come still come to work tell me what sense does that make right so a person like myself when i come in in the mornings i relieve the driver that's on, rather they were came in at three in the morning, hi David, make sure, or rather they worked overnight. I go and I relieve them. That means I go behind them in the bus, right? So that means we're not told who's positive. So if I get behind you and I don't know you're positive, but because you were told you still have to work because you have no symptoms, what about if I get symptoms? Hi, my sister overseer Tashina Johnson. What about my symptoms? I can get double symptoms because my body may not be able to take it, right? Hi, Jerry Legions. Hi, Vincent Young Bishop. So, and now we're only able to stay out five days. No more 14. Five days. And they're saying on the news five days because there's too many people staying out of work and there's not enough people to cover. Tell me the CDC don't know what they're talking about. First, when you take the vaccine, you don't have to wear a mask. Now that people that are taking vaccine. All right, so that's the actual clip, and I want to speak on this. I just experienced that uh, probably about a week and a half ago, a lady came in there. It's crazy how the world is still functioning, but nobody is accepting the fact that they can pass it on. I was so pissed off. This lady came in to uh, work. I think I said on our uh, sh- two shows ago, she came in to work with her. I was working. I work at UPS. And the lady came in there with her daughter, and they both wasn't wearing no mask. They still had, like, a little bit of a cough. And they was handing me a uh, broadcast alert. Broadcast is complete. From what? I don't know. It is on my phone. Stop. You know why I did that? Because we were talking about COVID. Wow. I bet my life on it. Have you ever noticed any time we talk about some conspiracy or it cuts off? If it says broadcast has been paused, it should resume shortly. All right, well, let's see if it does. Did you pause it? No. No, I I say it should, the main shit, all up, like, hold on. All right, let's go back to it. Damn. That's weird. But every time we start, we, we, we might have, oh, no, it's my internet. 
My uh, YouTube just cut down. Did the tox cable go out on? It might, but it's one. Yeah, I'll be wearing you. Oh, we got the line. One, two, where you still got kids writing essays on. Four, seven, two. Shout out to Chris. He came through. Came back there. And you go, okay. And she said, okay, he done. He gave me. He, 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 he said, not money, man.